Okay, so here we are, section 2.11, problem number one. Um, and 2.11 had two main concepts. One was related rates, and the other was implicit differentiation. Um, implicit differentiation, I guess, came first, and that's what we're going to start with here, is just the concept of doing a derivative implicitly. And the idea is, when do you want to use implicit differentiation? Well, when the problem tells you to. Or <laughs> when you cannot solve for y, when you can't solve for your dependent variable and then take the derivative of it. So, uh, we're going to attack this problem, and we're just going to say, all right, there's no way I'm solving this thing for y. So, we do derivatives, um, and one key thing students tend to forget is we have to treat x and y as two variables. So, because it's two variables, that means we have a variable multiplying a variable, so therefore there is a product rule there. So, we do the derivative of x, which would be 1, leave the y alone, plus now do the derivative of y, leaving the x alone the derivative of y is 1, but then don't forget we have to have dy dx plus, so then we move along. Derivative of natural log is 1 over the junk, and then we repeat the process over, so it's times, all right, so now I'm kind of using the cross out technique, scroll out technique, so now what have I not done the derivative of? x cubed y squared, and look, we have another product rule, um, so therefore we again do the derivative of x, leaving y alone, plus, now do the derivative of, leaving x alone, do the derivative of y, which would be 2y, then the derivative of y itself would be dy dx, and there we go. So then minus, now, e, I always like to throw an e in here just to remind you guys what's the derivative of e to the anything, well that's e to the anything, then the scratch out technique says, alright, we did the derivative of the e, so now I have to do the derivative of the exponent, which would be the derivative of y, which again is 1, and then times dy dx. And last but not least, don't forget this guy. We love to throw these at you. Look, there's no variables. So if there's no variables, the derivative of a constant is 0. Now, here comes the next fun part. Um, we need to solve for dy dx. You can't just leave it like this. So the first thing we're going to want to do is say, well, it will be easier to solve for dy dx if I get rid of this, and I, uh, this parentheses, and I distribute through. And right now, the problem looks pretty hairy. But as we start to clean it up, you will realize that when we distribute this through, some awesome simplification is going to occur. So I'm going to go ahead and write it in unsimplified, just so you can, you can even help follow the, follow the math. So then that would be x cubed y squared plus, now our numerator up here might be something like 2x cubed y over x cubed y squared. minus e to the y dy dx equals 0. So here we go. Let's have some fun. Um, we The first term, nothing we can do, leave it alone. Second term, nothing we can do, leave it alone. Third term, ha ha ha. Look, we have an x squared in the numerator and x cubed in the denominator, so that's just going to leave, leave us with an x. I have y squared divided by y squared, so this is divided completely. Over here in the next term, we have an x cubed divided by x cubed, and then a y divided by y squared. Um, so, once we kind of clean all that up, we'll be left with y plus x dy dx plus 3 over x plus 2 over y dy dx minus e to the y dy dx equals 0. And as you can see, that cleaned itself up considerably far less scary at this point. So now we're going to add and subtract everything to the left or to the right. We're going to keep our dy dx stuffs on the left, uh, just because I wanted to. You could move them to the right if you if you so chose. Um, and then I'm going to move everything else to the right. So that would leave me with x dy dx. Excuse me, that was that's an x. There we go. Um, plus two over y dy dx minus e to the y dy dx. And then to the other side, I'm going to have a negative y minus 3 over x, and I believe that's everything. So now to get dy dx by itself, we notice we have three terms, all have dy dx on the left, so we'll factor that out, leaving us with, leaving us with x plus 2 over y minus e to the y. And that's equal to negative y minus 3 over x. And quite frankly, a lot of students will jump um, straight from straight from this line to this line, they skip the, the work in between. And that's absolutely fine. I understand a lot of you could just do that in your head.
head. Um, so then next step, solve for dy dx. We need to divide by x plus 2 over y minus e to the y. But whatever I do to one side of the equal sign, I have to do to the other to keep it balanced. That is a property of equality. So therefore, I'm left with dy dx equals negative y minus 3 over x, all over x plus 2 over y minus e to the y. And there is your implicit differentiation. Um, and so the idea here is you have to remember, implicit differentiation is not, um, I, I don't want to call it not equal to, but it's it's definitely a little messier than regular, than explicit differentiation. Because when you use implicit differentiation, notice you will have y's left over and x's left over inside your equation, where with explicit differentiation, all you have left is x's. So it, it's not to say that the two methods are equal. We'd actually always prefer to do explicit dif differentiation um, if, if the process were possible or if the, if the process were, were just a few steps of algebra. You'd, r you'd rather go that route. This is kind of a method of last resort. Um, okay. Happy studying.